प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समी पे रहो हमारी एह नजर समी पे रहो हमारी एह घनश्याम महाराज नी जय हरि कृष्ण महाराज नी जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय सुप्रीम ओम आई डी our beloved Gansham Maharaj, the path maker to our liberation, our Puja Guruji, Puja Santo and all of you Bhaktos, Jai Swami Narayan. This lecture is regarding U.S. Sabha Course 5, ages 18 to 45. Uh, this Katha took place on March 16th, 2019. In this Sabha, Pujya Swami discusses regarding a couple of very important statements from the Vachnamrut Gadda, middle chapter 28th. Maharaj's compassionate nature, a lifeline. That's the heading of the Vachnamrut. We do not want to read the whole Vachnamrut, but just the main points that Pujya Swami covered. And then we'll discuss in depth regarding each sentence. So first we'll just read the important lines that uh, Pujya Swami had selected and then we'll go further. Swami Narayan Hare. So this Vachnamrut pretty much um, discusses uh, the various aspects and natures uh, of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, what he likes and what not. But there is a couple of points that are very, very important in the life of a satsangi may it be a sadhu or may it be a householder. So first point is uh, from this Vachnamrut. On the other hand, I become ex extremely pleased with one who menially serves the devotees of God. This is just one sentence, but in this the whole essence of the scriptures is, we can say, here. Because when Bhagwan becomes extremely pleased then what else is there left to do? But Bhagwan shows that his, him becoming pleased is in the fashion of menially serving the devotees of God. Devotees of God meaning may it be a sant, may it be a Hari Bhagat. They are devotees of God, meaning followers of God. So that was the first line. The second one that Pujya Swami read was, in fact, the only method for a person to please God is to serve devotees of God by thought, word, and deed. Another sentence in this precious Vajnamrut beholds the form that if one serves God, but the only method for a person to please God, meaning there's many methods, but to for Bhagwan to become pleased, Bhagwan puts that one word only which gives us an emphasis on what he wants us to do. And that is to serve devotees of God by thought, word, and deed, which we'll discuss more in depth in soon. The third sentence is, Hence, in order to please God, I desire only to serve devotees of God in this life and all lives. Furthermore, just as this is my resolution, all of you should also make the same resolution. So Bhagwan wants us to match his inclination. Because for countless lives, we have had different inclinations than Bhagwan. Due to that very factor, we have still not reached his divine abode. We have still not attained a state of oneness with his murti we still have not attained redemptive virtues. Due to this factor, we are still traveling and traveling and traveling in this cycle of life and death. But Bhagwan shows us his resolution that in order to please God, I desire only to serve devotees 
of God in this life in all lives meaning we can start to now develop a point or a subject in mind this this vachanamrut is regarding serving the devotees of God is the only method to pleasing bhagwan this can be the main you can say essence of this vachanamrut and finally the fourth and last statement that puja swami reads from this vachanamrut is what is this discourse which i have delivered before you like meaning bhagwan is saying this sriji maharaj well i have delivered it having heard and having extracted the essence from the vedas the shastras the purans and all the other words on this earth pertaining to liberation this is the most profound and fundamental principle it is the essence of all essences for all those who have previously attained liberation for all those who will attain it in the future and for all those who are presently treading the path of liberation this discourse is like a lifeline just imagine bhagwan swami narayan's compassion for us that he has revealed to us what he likes or else being god and coming on this earth he could have just performed his divine incidences but not shared his inclination not shared his likings then how would we know how could we identify how could this mind comprehend or even trying to calculate bhagwan swami narayan's inclination what he likes what he does not like but through his compassionate nature bhagwan swami narayan says that i have extracted it from the essences of the vedas the scriptures meaning we do not have to go around read other various scriptures and pretty much try to find what bhagwan likes and what he doesn't like bhagwan swami narayan is the only avatar otari not avatar but otari we can say meaning supreme entity who has revealed to us in such a clean state this kind of a uh, principles and straightforward yet yet very easy to understand and bhagwan says that this is the most profound and fundamental principle it is the essence of the essences what that bhagwan is pleased only by serving the devotees of god through thought word and deed meaning we can say that everything lies in this very statement may it be liberation may it be a spiritual state of enlightenment may it be dharma bhakti gnan vairagya because everything is to please bhagwan if it is done then bhagwan himself will take care of everything else which is deficient in that devotee due to that very factor serving the devotees of god should we made primary in our lives now let's analyze each statement that we have read through puja swami's perspective swami states that this vachana mrut's heading is maharaj's compassion nature a lifeline one has to keep this vachana mrut through one's life because not only did bhagwan swami narayan state the essences but he showed us his straightforward principle and by following this bhagwan will become pleased on us today's subject will focus on performing seva to attain rajipo of santo and bhakto the first statement in fact the only method for a person to please god is to serve devotees of god by thought word and deed from looking at puja swami's perspective everyone in this world is trying to please or attain rajipo of someone else there is some kind of selfish motive inside their intention even those who try to please others cannot do so 100% meaning in the world you can see even if you take an example of uh something in your life and even in your family your father is trying to please your mother your mother is trying to please your father your brother is trying to please your sister so on and so forth these numerous combinations can be seen 
And through this, we can tell that there's some kind of selfish motive there. There is something that that person wants in return. Due to that factor, that person is pleasing the opposite. Nonetheless, Swami said that the result of this is not 100%. We cannot say that everyone in the world is pleased by one another, whatever combination fits. Because the world is based off of the intention of selfish motive. If this one negative element was removed, then there might be a possibility that a person can be pleased 100%. But we cannot say so definitely. Moving on. If we try to please everyone in the world, we will end up in misery. It is only when we strive night and day to please Maharaj that we will attain, attain true everlasting bliss. I mean, this is very evident. We can see that even if we please someone in the world, maybe in a couple of years, we see them also stabbing us in the back meaning doing something behind our back, talking negative, what, et cetera, so on and so forth. Due to that, when we find out, we attain some kind of misery. But by pleasing Bhagwan Swami Narayan, there is no kind of, any kind of negativity, there is no kind of corruption, there is no kind of way that one can attain misery. One can only attain everlasting bliss because Bhagwan's form is in that fashion. Maharaj says, I will become Raji upon who? Upon you by performing the say of devotees by thought, word, and deed. It is, is it ever possible to please someone by doing something for someone else in the world? It is not possible. Only when you please the person, he becomes happy upon you. But Bhagwan Swaminarayan's calculation is different. Bhagwan Swaminarayan says that if you serve my santo and bhakto, then I will become happy upon you. Usually it just works in a direct fashion that if you want to please your friend, then you have to directly do something for that person, give something to that person, talk in this fashion, so on and so forth. Whatever that method is, Whichever method works to please that opposite person, it's a direct connection. But Bhagwan Swaminarayan's calculation is different. Bhagwan is such a high, high entity that one cannot please him directly. But Bhagwan shows us an easy method that if you serve those who are around you, if you please those who are around you, santos and bhaktos, due to that, I live within them. And if they become pleased, then I will also become pleased upon you. It's a straightforward, you can say, uh, you can say equation. But sometimes we tend to mix the equation up. Sometimes we tend to um, kind of try to make our own equation. Due to that, Bhagwan doesn't become happy. Even if we think that I'm doing this much, yet why isn't Bhagwan becoming happy? But in reality. Bhagwan's vision, Bhagwan's perspective, the what he likes, that's what we have to fit into our mind. Our vision, our perspective, our view, we have to remove. Because for lives, in, innumerable lives, we have been using everything of ours. Due to that, we're still traveling this cycle of life and death. But if we take out of ours, and if we implement Bhagwan's vision, perspective, his Ekantik Satpurusha's vision, perspective, then definitely in this life we can attain Bhagwan's Akshardham and bliss even on this earth amongst these santos and bhaktos. Everlasting bliss can be experienced here on this earth, even present time, because it all lies within the mind it all lies within our understanding. So that's why one must understand that if we please Maharaj, if we want to please Maharaj, then we have to first please his Satpurush, his Santo, and Bhakto, and then Bhagwan will become pleased. 
Now the question arises, how does Maharaj become happy or pleased on those who serve their santo and bhakto? Obviously, Maharaj, Swami says that due to the presence of Maharaj in each and every sant and bhakta, Maharaj becomes happy upon the individual. As we explained and talked in before, same equation. Moving on to the second sentence. Hence, in order to please God, I desire only to serve devotees of God in this life and all lives. Furthermore, just as this is my resolution, all of you should also make the same resolution. Now Bhagwan is saying that remove your inclination resolution and make my resolution your resolution. How so? First question. What are the benefits of performing seva? Why does Bhagwan become Raji? First point. If the vrittis of the Indriyas are engaged in the service of Sri Krishna Bhagwan and his bhakta, then the antakaran is purified and the sins that have been attached to the jiva since time immoral are destroyed. Gadda, 1st chapter 8, Vachnamrut. From this, Swami is saying that from for, for performing the seva, the benefits is that our, our vrutti, meaning our vision, the vision to do sin, the vision to engage our senses in the worldly pleasures, we have to break that somehow in order to connect it with God. But to break that, that agent that we can use is seva. By performing the seva, one's vision, one's inclination to do bad automatically becomes destroyed. This is proven in Gadada 1st chapter 8th, Vachnamrut. We cannot, but we cannot get the result of performing seva. We have to destroy it. Meaning, sometimes our inclination, sometimes our motive of doing this seva is somewhat a little off. Due to that, no, much, no matter how much seva we do, we have read this Vachnamrut, we understand it, we even you know, listen to this katha, read everything, and off of that we can tell that, yeah, okay, so now I have to perform seva. But by performing seva, you start to do it so much, so much, but you're not getting the results. Well, there's something that is going wrong. There's some minor, you can say, code coding that has been mismatched. Due to that, the perfect formula is not being created. And due to that, in this, you can say, principle, our sins are not being destroyed. We'll find out what that is in the future. Second point that Swami states from the Vachnamrut Gadada Middle Chapter 40th is there is no spiritual endeavor that benefits a person and gives as much happiness as that of serving a devotee of God by thought, word, and deed. So you may observe that those who have attained the Rajip of Santo Bhakto or others is through the inclination of Seva. I mean, we can see this clearly in, uh, in the life of many. And, you know, some witness, we witness that, oh, this Sant is happy upon uh, on this Bhagat. Uh, this Bhagat is happy upon this Bhagat. But all the reason, the fundamental reason is due to Seva or service of that Bhagat. And third point is, by performing with extreme affection, such similar service of God and the Sant, who possesses the highest qualities, even if he is a devotee of the lowest type and was destined to become a devotee of the highest type after two lives or after four lives or after ten lives or after one hundred lives, he will become a devotee of the highest caliber in this very life. Vartal 5th chapter. Now this is the third benefit of doing seva, performing seva and making Maharaj happy. By this, even if one is in the first grade and is trying to get to the second grade and third grade and so on and so forth, but keeps failing, 
Well, then what happens is that the principal comes and sees our results and says that, you know, he has tried so much and he's making an effort. Let's push him up. And due to that one document from the principal, automatically we, we shift grades. Even if it was not in our hands, somehow we upgrade it. In the same way, here in satsang, here in this holy fellowship, there are some cases where even the newest of the devotees come. Those who have only had satsang for maybe a couple of lives in the past. So they're new to it. They don't exactly know everything or they are very um, on a normal basis. But they have an inclination to serve, to become, uh, to make Maharaj and his Satpuruj happy. Well, if one tries this method, then even in this life, even if one was destined to become a devotee even after 100 lives, or destined to become a uh, destined to go to Akshardham even after 100 lives he will go in this very life due to the service of Maharaj and his Ekantik Satpurush this is the you can say Pratap you can say this is the greatness of a Satsang this is what Satsang does for us and this is what Seva of the devotees of God does for one this is how important it is this is how much weight it, it has Due to that, one should understand and one should perform accordingly. Not with, you can say, force or haste, but with understanding, one should perform seva. Not looking at the quantity, but performing seva by quality. One should serve santos and bhaktos. And due to that, Maharaj becomes happy. Because even in Swami Nivato, Sadguru Gunati Tanan Swami, he said that one may run a temple and administrate a temple the whole day and do the works of a temple the whole day, and the other person may eat three times a day and sleep all day. But if he is in the, you can say, notion with the wish of the great Sant, then he is greater than the person who is doing everything and administrating a whole mandir through his mind's wish. That's how that's how much a, a difference it makes in satsang. So satsang is not about quantity, but satsang is about quality. And performing satsang through quality will give one the fruits which one will experience here on this earth and beyond. Then Swami reads a great story regarding the the very notion of this um, Vachnamrut uh, regarding Seva and changing and completely becoming uh, destined for Akshardham even in this life that we would like to read now. Sriji Maharaj was passing through the streets of Jetalpur with a cart loaded with wheat. He wanted to perform a great yagna ceremony in Jetalpur and had desired to feed hundreds of Brahmins. He would stop at every home and give two measures of wheat with a request to grind it into flour. In those days, uh, they did not have, obviously, bags ready to go, just like how we do 10 kg, 5 kg, 20 kg of wheat flour. They had to actually take the wheat itself, the grain, and then they had to uh, use this uh, kind of a, a, you can say, a, a machine, but made a manual machine, and they had to grind the wheat uh, in that fashion in order to make uh, rotli or whatnot. All the devotees readily offered their service and prepared the flour. As Sriji Maharaj wanted to redeem innumerable jeeves, he would not give more than two measures of wheat to any of the devotees, even though many people desired to grind more wheat. Bhagwan Swaminarayan's perspective of liberating as many souls as possible was something that was remarkable because he had santos, bhaktos that could do this in just two or day, two days at most 
but Bhagwan, what he decided to do that so each person could benefit he went from home to home and distributed grains so that their souls can benefit in the same way when this prasang comes up of Maharaj's inclination in this way I'm reminded of Puja Guruji and how as of right now he's building a grand mandir in Loya, India a very remote village the, vi uh, the mandir is very massive not in size as well but also in expense due to the stone and the interior works of it and the size overall but there's many many donors that come and want to serve in this uh, and given this mandir but Puja Guruji not only accepts their donation but also he cuts those donations and tell them that no we do not want them let others also participate and let others also benefit in joining in these seva efforts or he could just take and use the uh, use the funds for the temple and the temple would be built in no time but innumerable souls can benefit even those workers who come there and work on the mandir their souls can benefit even those who make donations can benefit even those who plan for it in the form of architecture even those who carve the stone from it everything and anything that is connected with the mandir making of the mandir may it be on a documental process or may it be in a physical way or may it be in designing and architecture so on and so forth those who uh, support and help their liberation can be guaranteed and their souls can become purified only with that soul inclination our puja guruji right now is building this temple and from that we can see that Bhagwan Swaminarayan's perspective and our Puja Guruji's perspective is one because Maharaj lives inside of Puja Guruji and through him he does his works as we can see currently. While passing through the streets of Jetalpur, Maharaj arrived at a spot where a prostitute lived. Her name was Lakshmi Bai. She was taking rest on her cot when Maharaj reached her home. As soon as she heard Maharaj talking to the people, she came out of her house. No sooner did she behold the luminous figure of Maharaj, than all her mind was drawn towards was him. She felt some strange power pulling her towards Maharaj. While remaining on her doorstep, she spoke to Maharaj, who was seated, who was seated on the cart. O oh Lord, are you giving this wheat to people to grind? grind it into flour yes said Maharaj how much how much will you pay for this work I don't pay in cash I bless those people who help us in our work and bestow upon them my divine bliss will you bless me if I grind the wheat certainly provide certainly provided you provided you it you do it yourself replied Maharaj meaning if you do it yourself certainly then please give me my share Sriji Maharaj gave her two measures of wheat weighing about 20 kilograms to the prostitute she bathed and cleaned and and hand operated mill herself her servants requested her to allow them to do the work for for her they told her let us grind the wheat you're not used to this type of work, so you'll become tired and get blisters on your palms. But she was determined to earn Sriji Maharaj's blessings. Now this is what we have to look at. This is the perspective. She firmly, she firmly told them, I will do it myself. God himself has commanded me to do it myself. She chanted the name of Bhagwan Swami Narayan while grinding them the wheat. The hard work made her t tired. She began to sweat, but she had resolved to complete the work by next morning. I will, I will grind all the wheat by tomorrow morning. 20 kgs of wheat in one night, that's a very, very uh, difficult task. Only if one does it non-stop can it be done. 
let's see what happens. As the grinding of the wheat proceeded, all of the impurities from the, her heart began to disappear. We are all familiar with this incident of Satyakam Jabali. He had studied. He had, he had, he had studied any scriptures. He simply carried out the command of his guru and looked after his cows. By the grace of his guru, he attained the highest wisdom. In the same way, this fallen pro prostitute of Jetalpur had become worthy of receiving redemption from Maharaj. Without taking food or water and, pass, and without pausing for rest, she went on milling the wheat throughout the night. Next morning, when the work was over, she took a bath, put on simple clothes, wore no ornaments on her, on her body, and carrying the basket of wheat flour on her head, she went to Maharaj. She laid the basket of the wheat flour at Maharaj's feet and stood with her folded hands. Sriji Maharaj was greatly pleased with her. The prostitute asked Maharaj, Shall I be worthy of your blessings? The assembly started grumbling. She's a prostitute. She is a fallen woman leading an unholy life. She couldn't have gr grounded she couldn't have ground the wheat herself. She must have made one of her servants do it for her. How can she be blessed? But the Lord wanted the assembly to have a glimpse of her clean conscience and pure heart. Therefore he asked her, "Did you grind the wheat yourself?" "Yes, my lord." She replied, Show me your palms, said Maharaj. There were blisters on her palms stained with blood. Everyone in the assembly was convinced of her sincerity and devotion. Blessing her, Maharaj said that you will be liberated the way Muktanan Swami is liberated. People were amazed to see the transformation of the fallen prostitute. They all realized the glory of seeking communion with Sriji Maharaj. Maharaj accepted her invitation and went to her mansion with sadhus and devotees and dined at her home and purified her home. From this we can understand that this prostitute was obviously doing immoral acts. But when she came in the context of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, Bhagwan Swami Narayan did not develop a feeling of that this person is this impure, or Bhagwan Swami Narayan did not have such a feeling or an allergic, you can say, reaction that I don't want to give it to this person. But just so that one single soul's pr liberation can be granted, Bhagwan Swami Narayan gave 20 kgs of wheat and this prostitute sincerely with a pure heart by chanting Bhagwan's name performed this task and due to that Bhagwan became pleased just in one night from this we can see that her vruttis her vision for for performing sins were was destroyed by serving Maharaj selflessly Swami picked a very, very, you can say, perfect example story for this whole subject itself from which we can remember that uh, even if we make an effort to please Maharaj and his Satpurush and his Santo and Bhakto, why can they not be pleased? How can they not be pleased? If we have a pure heart, then Bhagwan lives in each and every Sant and Bhakta's heart. He will definitely become pleased. So our job is to make an effort now. Then Swami proposes in the next statement, When does sin burn? Sometimes when we do seva, that seva does not remain seva, but it becomes a task. One has to be careful this does not happen. If it becomes a task, it will not give the proper fruits. Why should we do seva? Now our intention what should our intention be of doing seva? That that is what Pujaswami is specifying and stating in this Vachnamruta, you can say, lecture.
So number one, why should we do seva? So my countless past lives, sin, burn away. I do not receive any bad thoughts. So do, and, and also, I do not think inappropriately about Hari Bhaktos of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. Number two, my soul receives goodwill. And number three, my mind and senses become purified so it would be easy to perceive the form of God within my soul. These are the three reasons. Number one, sins burn away. Inside of number one, no bad thoughts occur for others. Number two, my soul receives good will. Good happens to my soul. We do not want good to happen to this body. We do not want good to happen to this mind. But we want our soul to become transformed in a pure way. In a way that Bhagwan Swaminarayan likes. And it can be done through this act of seva. And third, our senses become purified. Meaning if all of these five senses, the eyes, ears, nose, so on and so forth, they, they become purified, then we'd be able to behold Bhagwan's form inside of ourselves. These are the three very reasons why one should do seva. Moving on. When we do seva, think that I want to purify my soul and attain the Rajipo of Maharaj, Guruji, Santo and Bhakto. Just keep this goal. Do not do it for any other purpose. To attain the Rajipo of others, one needs to develop the inclination of seva. Now Swami gives another small example of a story of Sadhguru Gopan Swami. And Swami had uh, been traveling uh, a very long time and he was walking. And he had uh, come to one of the temples and he was very tired so he went to sleep. Now a Sant came and uh, started to perform the Seva of Gopan Swami by massaging his uh, feet because Swami was very tired and his feet were hurting so while doing this Swami uh, this Sant must have came at, at uh, during the night time and then Swami went into a deep sleep into Bhagwan's Murti and this Sant performed Seva throughout the whole night now what happened was that when Swami woke up in the morning may it be 5 or 4 or 5 a.m he still saw the sun there performing seva and he became very pleased and Swami said that you have been here this whole night he's like yes Swami I, I wanted to perform your seva and I got this opportunity Swami became so pleased Swami says that I'm very pleased upon you ask for anything so this sun knew that Swami was a very highly spiritualized saint a very enlightened saint Due to that, this son said that, you know, I am I develop very uh, bad thoughts at times, Swami, regarding the pleasures of the world. So please perform daya upon me. Please do something for my soul so it can benefit. Swami, knowing this, he pointed to a, a, a column, and he said that if this column ever develops thoughts, bad thoughts then you will also develop bad thoughts. I mean, think about it. Can a column develop a thought at all? No. And from that on, from that point onwards, Puji Swami destroyed the son's uh, bad, vicious thoughts due to this son's seva. But this son performed seva in at what level? That's what we want to see. He did it selflessly. He did not have any competition. He did not do it to uh, look good in the eyes of others. He solely did it, number one, knowing that Puja Swami is a great saint and he, uh, with divine Adivya Bhav. And number two, he did it to please Swami. Due to this, obviously Swami knew through his omniscient powers when he woke up that, you know, this Sant has uh, performed it in this way. And due to that, Swami gave him a wish and and he wished for this, and Swami granted it. So this is what seva can do to uh, one's soul. This is how important it is. 
The great Satpurush has become pleased upon those who have served. Guruji said that in my life, all I have tried to do is attain the Rajipo of Santo and Bhakto. Even our Puja Guruji state this in, in his Katha in various times that throughout my life, all I have tried to do is attain the Rajipo of Santo and Bhakto. Think about how much you can say uh, um, humbleness he must have in his, in, his, in his soul that even Santo and Bhakto, may it, we can understand Santo, but even Bhakto through Mahima, through understanding the glory of of this sant, this ma, this bhakta is of Bhagwan Swami Narayans. And due to that, Bhagwan, uh, Puja Guruji, and we can see this in his life, that he may it be even the smallest child, or may it be even the oldest uh, oldest uh, person, Puja Guruji always tries to attain some kind of rajipo from them. And that's why he is great, we can say. There is no better spiritual endeavor to please Maharaj than to serve his santo and bhakto. This is the end statement, the essence of this whole lecture. From this we can understand that uh, the main, you can say, statement of this whole lecture is that Maharaj is pleased through serving his santo and bhakto. And that's what the inclination we should develop in our heart. And due to this, um, this lecture, we can get a clean perspective of how to do seva uh, and what reason to have, what intentions to have. And from this, if we start right now, then moksha liberation or purifying our soul is not far away at all. So that's why uh, our Puja Santos by the Agna of Puja Guruji perform these kinds of kathas for us so we can benefit and uh, elevate our souls. So, understand this lecture, uh, Yuva Sabha, Course 5, uh, March 16, 2019. An examination will be taking place in June regarding all these courses up to how much ever courses uh, Pujaswami will perform. All these will be translated and uh, an examination for those who are in this English course will be taking place in June. So, you can stay prepared if you have not received the course uh, and if you do want to, please email us at luedamenjay at gmail.com. Saying this, my humble, Jay Swaminarayan.